Welcome to Bright Hope Creations. I'm Kara, and today we are making a Magic Iris Fall Birdhouse. And we're using the Magic Iris Sunflower add-on. And we're using textured canvas yellows for the flowers. I cut a bunch of the stitched leaves and small stitched leaves in textured canvas browns and yellows and the red and orange ones too. The Magic Iris Birdhouse add-on was cut out of light brown wood grain cardstock. I'm shading all of the die cuts today with Lawn Fawn ink, and this is Walnut, and I'm using some small blending brushes to get into those little nooks and crannies. The stitching on the leaves along with the canvas cardstock gives such a nice texture, and the ink blending not only adds shading, but also highlights that texture. I'm coming in with some artichoke and I'll also use some cilantro ink. Get those yellow leaves some green. I really enjoy shading leaves because they come out great most of the time and it doesn't take much. I mean look at this chili pepper ink on the leaves. First of all on this red one okay but on that yellow one boy it really changes it up quite a bit. And I'll even add that red to the brown leaves too. Gives them some depth in their color. Just a little variation there. On the little vines, now these are from the birdhouse add-on. I'm using some sugar plum on some of the reds and on the brown cardstocks. Shading the roof and the base of the birdhouse with some chili pepper ink and also onto the wood grain cardstock but really focusing more on that walnut ink to give that the shading that I'm looking for. And now that I have all of my leaves and my birdhouse shaded it's time to work on those sunflowers so set those aside and I'm first going to cut apart the petals on the light yellow flowers and that's going to be my top layer. By disconnecting those petals it'll allow me to fold and shape those a little for some dimension. So cutting those all apart and you can see how they separate and there's just a little bit that holds them together so it's really easy to cut apart. So now I'm bending and shaping those petals and giving them that dimension just fluffing them up <laughs> i guess so this card is going to have some dimension but it will still fold nicely into an envelope if i need to but uh boy if you want to just really get this fluffed up i don't know that you'd want to put it in a flat envelope because it's so pretty with all that dimension all right well that's that top layer and i have a darker yellow for another layer behind it but just like with the leaves in that birdhouse I want to give it some shading and this is called number two pencil that's the name of the ink and I'll use that and some sunflower ink to shade up these petals. I shaded the darker yellow flower as well and now it's time to shade that center of the flower. I really I just cut these out of the yellow cardstock and I thought mm, I could probably brown these up enough so I didn't think I needed to cut them out of brown cardstock and sure enough with this walnut ink I think it worked out pretty well. We'll get back to those sunflowers once we arrange things on the card but let's put this magic iris together. So I have these three curved pieces which fit into one ring. So you cut three rings and then cut one of the rings with the special holes and then you can put your sausage pieces I guess in those holes and now I am using really mini dots, glue dots, to add to each of those sausage pieces and I'm adding them where there's this little X that's scored into the piece. See, it's really easy to find. Make sure that those three curved pieces line up well and stay on the ring. And then I can add another ring on top of that. So that'll just be held by those three mini glue dots. Now I can flip it over and add the braces. So I cut out three of the brace pieces, which is kind of a little rectangle with a curve on it. 
and I'm adding them. And there is a spot on the back that shows exactly where they go. So it, it has some stitching lines there. It's really a nice guide to help put this together. So adding those braces and I'm flipping it back over. And now I'm going to add the handle. Lawn Fawn has a nice, strong double-sided tape. And so I'm putting that on the handle. Now I'll place that handle on the ring so it creates a V with one of the stabilizers. And then I can add that top ring and put some adhesive on those stabilizers and bend them over. Now I'm not putting those all the way to the edge, just kind of maybe an eighth of an inch to the edge so that the, that the mechanism has a chance to move in there. So let's check this out. Is it working? Uh, yes, yes it is. So whew, always fun to see it in action. All right, now this little piece comes with the Magic Iris add-on and you can see up to the right that I've already cut out the Magic Iris add-on out of paper bag cardstock, note card out of craft cardstock. Now this little handle will be flat on one edge so that it will be flush with that Magic Iris add-on. I like that add-on because it gives a nice base for whatever you're putting on your card. All right, adding that, and so I can clip off just a little bit of the handle behind it that I don't want to show. And I cut another piece out of orange cardstock, this textured canvas cardstock, like on the birdhouse, and added that for the arrow. Now I can just add some adhesive everywhere on top of that magic iris and line it up with my magic iris add-on. But here's the deal. You need to have the magic iris closed when you put it together. So I realized that as I tried to open it. So I closed it up and now I am replacing it onto the magic iris add-on and there you go. It works. It works well now. Oh, I have my four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card behind it, and I'm going to stamp directly on that note card for the sentiment. And so I want to take a pencil and just kind of give myself a guide of where I'm going to stamp that sentiment. This sentiment is from the Magic Messages stamp set, and I'm going to stamp it in walnut ink. And I stamped it a few times to get a nice crisp image. But once I have that all set, I can erase my marks, my pencil marks, and then I have it just where I need it to be. Now looking at this card, I could say, oh, that's done. It's a nice, clean and simple card. But no, we have to add everything else on here. And I'm adding the Magic Iris add-on with some foam tape just to raise it up a little bit to give that iris some room to move. So getting those pieces on there, but making sure that it's not where it would get in the way. And then I put some adhesive on just the stabilizers, and now I can position that onto my card. Well, now for my favorite part, decorating the card. So it's kind of like baking a cake. You bake the cake, and the cake is great, and it tastes nice and everything, but it's decorating that cake, putting the frosting on that, that is really kind of the fun part of the cake. And I feel like it's the same way with the card. So we made the cake, we made the magic iris, and we've got that all set. And now we get to put the frosting on. So I'm using some glue to get those pieces onto the birdhouse. And that's that jumbo glue tube that Lawn Fawn has. And I'm going to just glue this directly onto my Magic Iris add-on. And those sausage pieces that I put in are wood grain cardstock, so they match up with my birdhouse. And I didn't want to blend ink too much in them because I wanted to make sure that it looked right when it was closed and when it was open. And I'm pretty happy with it, and I can start now putting together my sunflowers. So what I'm doing is cutting one at one petal and I'm going to glue it one petal in. So just put some glue on that petal and 
overlap it with another petal and that's going to make it a little smaller and that'll curve it a little more as well so those petals will come forward a bit and then you'll also be able to see the flower behind it the petals of the back layer now the center was cut straight out of the flower so this also gives me a little area where I can glue that on it, it makes it a little smaller of an opening so that that center will have a place to rest and have glue on it so that it'll overlap those petals and now you can see how that flower really fluffs up well I made three of them and I'm now I'm just going to figure out where I want them on the card and yes so much of them is going to just be cut away I probably could have gotten away with just making two of them and using the different parts that I'm cutting off but here we are <laughs> with the three and I'm figuring out how they're going to overlap with the birdhouse so some behind some in front some a little of both and I'm going to cut some of the bulk away from the flower so that it sits nice behind that birdhouse. Now I made a Christmas card using the birdhouse and had all of the florals that you would find at Christmas time, so the poinsettia and different berries and things like that. So this one is my fall version with the sunflowers and leaves. And if you have a bird feeder in your backyard, you might also have sunflowers. <laughs> <laughs> because they drop at, well in my backyard they those sunflower seeds drop and then all of a sudden I've got sunflowers growing up right under it so I kind of thought that would look good with this birdhouse we did have some bird seed that was I don't know if it was baked or something that those seeds weren't going to germinate but uh, I think my husband went to the cheaper <laughs> version of the bird seed and so Oh, I'm pulling out sunflowers from under the feeder. Well, I'm cutting those flowers off and I'm, I like to cut them from the back so I have a nice edge to look at as I'm cutting. Now that they're all cut off, I think they look good in that kind of that rule of threes where, you know, you have the three pieces and they're in different parts of the card and that way they're not too symmetrical and they create great space to add those leaves and so just tucking those in deciding where they're going to go trying to balance the colors and shapes along the way and I'll keep them tucked in and see if I can glue them down while they are right where I want them to be so just add some glue behind those leaves and we're set to go I'm adding the little birdhouse vines and then that little circle that is where the bird can stand or perch in front of the birdhouse. Now I had a real bird dilemma when it came to who is going to sit on this card. At first I thought I would put a, a yellow bird, so like a goldfinch, but then with all the yellow with the sunflowers, I thought, no, and our goldfinches are kind of losing their color now, so... Um, and then I thought something that would contrast like blue, but all well, the blue birds are gone. You know, I don't know. I was overthinking it, right? But then I thought, well, maybe I need something lighter so that it would really stand out because everything on the card is kind of the same in saturation of color. And so I tried the light birds and meh, they just kind of washed out. So, uh, cardinal to the rescue decided to go with a cardinal and with this bird obviously it doesn't have that cap on his head so I cut an extra wing and created a cap for the back and I'll just glue that on and and we have a cardinal I cut another bird out of black licorice cardstock and I'm using a white gel pen so you can see this I probably wouldn't use that but uh, it's easier for you to see on camera that I'm just cutting out a section of that and that will be for his face. And like with everything else, I wanna give him some shading. So I'm using walnut ink to ink blend his body and his wing and everything. And, and then I'm going to cut another part of this bird out of orange cardstock and just snip a little bit off and that will be his beak and I'm going to add it to the black add the black to the red and then we can 
add the wing and curve it up a little bit. Just give that some dimension and then add that cap onto his head. So the reason I went with the cardinal is I felt like it would balance out those red leaves and it worked well to tuck him into the yellow flowers. You can see him and he just, it, I don't know, it just, it all felt right to me. <laughs> I added a little foam tape to go behind him so that he was uh, brought up in front a little bit. And now we're ready to see this card in action. So here we go. Open it up and it says, you make me smile. And yes, uh, magic irises, they just, they do. They make me smile. <laughs> they're, they're such a fun, uh, interactive component to work with and they make a great card. So I hope you enjoyed the video today and it inspired you to make a fall magic iris card for yourself. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.